by defined osmosis as the diffusion of water, but we'll kind of unpack it a little more. Um, osmosis, the diffusion of water across the selectively permeable membrane. Um, so here's the membrane in the middle. And what you can see is that water can go through, but not the solute. And that's not always the case. Sometimes the solute can pass too. It's a simpler example to teach if only water can move in one direction. Remember, water goes to where the most solutes are, to where the most stuff is. It's trying to like uh, balance out this unequal concentration. Um, Remember the golden rule of biology? Water goes to where the most quote unquote stuff is, the solutes. Just a little uh, terminology review. Say you have a beaker of water. A beaker of water and you dissolve something in it, salt or glucose. The something in it, the stuff, is solute. The liquid it's dissolved in is the solvent, in this case water. If the solute is soluble in the solvent, you can kind of like stir it in there. It's called a solution, right? And the solution has a concentration of solute. In chemistry, it's molarity. In biology, it's osmolarity, O-S-M, which is basically biological concentration because osmolarity, that term is because of osmosis, osmolarity. So osmosis across a cell membrane can cause a, a cell to shrink or swell. That's why osmosis is important to learn in a biology class. Um, yeah, you don't want cells to explode when they swell or shrivel up. They can become non-functional. So osmosis depends on the osmolarity of the intracellular fluid as well as the osmolarity that this, uh, of the solution the cell is in. Here's a picture of uh, three possible scenarios of how a solution can affect cell volume. And actually, that is what we call tonicity. of a solution to affect cell volume. So that first scenario, they call it isotonic conditions. Iso means same. What's the same? Well, imagine that red blood cell um, in the beaker, a solution. I'll just put a red ball on the screen. Remember, the units are osmolarity, but I'm not always going to write it. I'll just put numbers. Uh, let's say the intracellular concentration is 10. And the concentration of the solution it's submerged in is also 10. So when the concentration is the same, there's flu fluids moving in and out. But in an isotonic situation, there is as much fluid moving out as in. So there's no net fluid movement. So the shape of the cell remains unchanged. Okay. Cell volume remains unchanged. That's a 
that's what I'm writing. Shape of cell remains unchanged. Uh, the middle frame, they have a um, hypertonic solution. Hypertonic. So there, the beaker water, hyper means more, hyper, right? Greater than. So if the cell is, uh, has a concentration of 10, and hyper means, uh, well, let's say the solution is, is saltier, 20. Water goes to the where, mo where the most stuff is. There will be more osmosis of water, water leaving the cell than entering. So there's a net movement of fluids out. More fluids are moving out than in. The cell will shrink. That's what's sh shown there. Cell shrinks. Then you have hypotonic solutions. solution's concentration is less than the cell's intracellular concentration. So just keep it 10, keep it easy, but then maybe the concentration of the water is 5, less than. So what's the rule? Water goes to where the most stuff is inside the cell. So there will be a net movement of fluid, more going in than going out, so the cell will swell. And maybe burst. Cell okay. swells, as, as shown better in the picture. <coughs> On your half sheet, answer that question. Which one is it? What do you think? B. I ask, which condition is hypertonic? Well, I kept it the same, right? This one. <laughs> so, B, the one the cell that shrunk. Okay. All right, moving on. Put this on your half sheet, too. Let's answer it together as a class. Which is it? Shout it out. Hey, the one that didn't change. That, that actually is how a red blood cell normally appears. So kind of simulate that in today's lab. This is not, this is kind of what we're doing. Um, except we're not using 2% sucrose. We have like 10% glucose. We have 30% glucose. We have a salt solution. We have starch. We have albumin. We'll be using those as our solutes. In a dialysis tubing that has to be clamped off on both ends. But the principle is the same. You're going to submerge it in water. So you submerge any, any kind of solute in water, DI water. <coughs> which is it? If you submerge it in water. I mean, what's the concentration of water? It's supposed to be zero, right? So which kind of condition is it if you're submerging your little bag of solution in water? this one. So you'd expect that your bag should gain weight. Okay, that's why if you read your procedure, you're going to have an hour incubation period, and it takes about that much time to see some kind of change. All right, so that's today's I will get to it. And there's other things I have to define. Tonicity, like I stated earlier, is the ability of a solution to alter the water volume of the cell. But this action generates pressure. Fluids are moving, but what's the result? You're building up pressure inside the cell, aren't you? 
And so there's terms that we like to define, osmotic and hydrostatic pressure. Osmotic pressure. You see a lot. You see it a lot in biology, uh, physiology too. Osmotic. The ability of a solution to draw water into some cell or structure, maybe a blood vessel, okay, as the result of its. Uh, solute concentration. Remember, water goes to where the most stuff is. So if you're highly concentrated, water is drawn into you. That, that's a pressure, osmotic pressure. The ability of the solution to draw water, H2O into itself. I mean, so I guess, think of a cell. Again, well, let me give you three scenarios. Uh, draw here. <coughs> so I fill them all up with water, which has a concentration of zero. Sterile water. Well, let's say you have uh, cells that are salty on the inside. 10, 100, 1,000. Okay, yeah, they're all hypotonic conditions, but let me ask you this. Which of these has the most, or excuse me, which has the highest osmotic pressure? Which has the strongest ability to draw water into it? This one. This one, right? Uh, so think of it that way, is the ability to draw water into you. This one wins as the highest osmotic pressure, right? So, let's say this is a starting point. Start. Boom. It's going to, like, swell. As it swells, the pressure inside is starting to build up because it's taking on so many fluids. So all the water inside, it, it starts to push on the outside. And this is kind of the, the pressure we kind of always know as pressure, like inside a pressure cooker, right? That's hydrostatic pressure. It opposes osmotic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure, it wants to push fluids back out. Osmotic pressure wants to draw water in, but this one wants to push the fluids back out because it's swelling. All right, hydrostatic pressure. opposes osmotic pressure. <coughs> it's a force. It's a pressure that wants to force fluids out. scenarios here, water is entering because of the osmotic pressure. But as a result of them filling with water, the hydrostatic pressure increases to the point of where the cell may burst. And there's there's got to be some point in each scenario where there's so much fluid going in, it's, it's starting to exert a force out. There, at some point, the two forces will be equal and opposite. And no, no fluid will flow in because the pressure inside matches the pressure outside. It could get to a point where the pressure inside, the hydrostatic pressure, is pushing 
so hard against the cell membrane that you may actually have a net fluid out. So it all depends which force is greater, the hydrostatic or the osmotic. So any, any questions about those uh, two pressures? One sucks fluid in, one pushes fluid out. The, the rule of thumb you want to keep in your head is right here. If hydrostatic pressure is greater than the osmotic pressure, fluids will go out. And the reverse is true. Fluids go in if osmotic pressure is greater, and there will be no net flow if the pressure, these pressures are equal. So you can kind of see how tonicity and this pressure thing, they kind of go hand in hand, right? Here's a, a, what I call the YouTube figure in your book, where the permeable membrane is in the middle of the U. Right? And it's permeable to both water and solute. And then so over time, uh, water will flow, so it'll start, water will flow to this side that I'm pointing to. But over time, concentration will balance out. Solids move to this side, water moves to this side. So not only is the concentration equal, the volume is equal. That's why they use the YouTube. It's easy to see that the volumes are equal as well as the concentration. Okay. But what if the selectively permeable membrane can only allow water to flow across and not solute? Well, same thing happens, water goes to where the most stuff is, and it'll balance out the concentration. So even though the concentration is equal, the volume is not. Okay. So that's why that matters. You have to think, what's diffusing across my membrane? Is it water? Is it the solute? You know, it, it could be both, or it could be just water. And that's something you have to test for in your beaker. Well, you're going to get some dialysis tubing, and you're, you're going to just clamp it off on both ends. You know, clamp, a little bit of tubing here, clamp on the other end, clamp and clamp. And your solute will be in there. We've got 10 groups. Two groups will do 10% glucose. Uh, we also have a 30% glucose. We also have uh, a salt solution. I believe it's calcium chloride. We'll just call it salt. We also have albumin and starch. Salt is calcium chloride. So those are like five different conditions, but ten groups, two of each. Okay. Now you're not going to do all, all five of them. You'll form groups of three to four, and you'll just do one condition because we don't have. To. I remember I, I originally wrote this lab. I wrote that you work in pairs and everyone does everything, and the tech laughed at me. He said, "We might have that kind of money to buy all that." You have to work in groups of three or four and do one condition. That's what we have for you guys. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, yeah, so anyways, whatever your group has, if you put it in there, your solution, and you submerge the thing in DI water. For an hour. Okay. But before you drop it in there, you got to get your pre-weight. That's why I got those balance on. You just weigh it before you submerge it. Get your pre, and then you're going to submerge it, wait an hour. If you finish your microscope lab, you can just go to Starbucks or something and come back. If you didn't, finish your microscope lab during that hour incubation. I think most of you are almost done. Okay. Anyways, hours up, you know, blot it off. Um, get your post weight. It should have gained weight, right? 
but there's a lot of variables here. Like, what if, I don't know, this is a polymer, these are monomers, um, these are small molecules, these are larger molecules. What if during that hour incubation, some of the time was allowed to leave, in addition to maybe water entering as you should expect to happen? We want you to test for that. We want you to test to see if any of your molecules, whether it be glucose or salt or albumin or starch, got out into the beaker. Okay. So you have to test for that. And, uh, so um, read the procedures. We want you to test the beaker water. To see if the solute could flow out of the selectively permeable membrane. Okay. Test the peak of water to see if the solute diffused out of the dialysis tubing. That's what this tubing is. It's a dialysis tubing. So whenever you, you test something, what are we testing? Beaker water. That's what we're testing. You're going to test for the presence or absence of glucose, salt, albumin, or starch. And there's different ways you detect those molecules. Just read the procedures and take it through it. You want to see if that beaker water has the solute in it. So that's the thing you're testing. But you always need a positive control and a negative control. A positive control is, huh, let's say, for example, we're, we're in the glucose group. And we're testing to see if the beaker water had glucose. What's a good positive control? The glucose solution we gave you. Because you know that has it, right? So, you know, that's a good positive control. The solution you put in there, you, you know that's got it, right? So that's positive control. You know it's going to test positive for that, whatever the readout is. Negative control, what would you use? How about just water? That shouldn't have glucose in it if you just get straight up water. Not this water, just like water. That should test negative. You know there's no glucose in it. Okay, so is that kind of clear? Any questions on this today's lab? I'm going to keep lecturing, but is there any more questions on that? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get back to this osmotic pressure. Get your half sheets out. I have a question here for you. Which cell, A or B, had a higher osmotic pressure to start with. You have to consider start, finish. Let's look at this and answer it. <coughs> this cell, A, this cell, B, both immersed 15 milliosmolarity, okay? 15 osmolarity. But look how they ended up. This one shrank, this one got all swollen. The question is, which had a higher osmotic pressure to start with? Go ahead and answer it. Just one question. What, what did you think? A or B? Huh. B. Kind of heard both, mostly Bs. Now, what is the definition of osmotic pressure? Draw water into you. Which one drew water into itself? B did. So to start with, B had the higher osmotic pressure. Yeah. Okay, same question phrased differently. Which cell, A or B, ends up 
with a higher had your static pressure ends up. So consider what as a result what happens. So that's what together. Put this on your half sheet too. Okay. This one or this one has a higher hydrostatic pressure. <coughs> I know these aren't numbered, but we've answered four questions so far. You can clearly number one, two, three, four on your half sheet. It'll make it easier for me to grade. Okay, what did you, what did you think? Which of ends up with higher hydrostatic pressure? It's the cell that has, it's about to burst. This one. That's full of pressure. Pressure is pushing out, you know. This one does. Okay. This one has... The cell it has a high osmotic pressure to start with. It ends up with a really high hydrostatic pressure. It's about to burst. High hydrostatic pressure, it's pushing out. Okay. Uh, let's think clinically, like a patient has high blood pressure. That means inside the blood vessel, there's more, there's a higher pressure. <laughs> And that could be hard on your heart over time as you're trying to treat that patient. But, but why? Do you think uh, um, a hypertense patient, do you think their blood is more salty or less salty? More salty. It's more salty because it has a higher osmotic pressure, so the blood vessels re retain more fluid. That's why doctors usually prescribe a low-sodium diet for patients who are hypertense. It's the same, same principle. When you eat pizza, don't you get thirsty? I do. It's all that salt. Making your blood salty. Would it be different if you had too low sodium in you? Like what? Um, yeah, but that's usually not a problem in the American diet. We, we don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, here's kind of like pictures of what I talked about. There's your clamps on your back. One of them is weighted, so it'll sink. Right. One of these is weight. I can't remember which one. Why did it move away? You weigh pre and post. Um, get DI water from the sink. And um, well, let's talk about schedule a little bit. Before we take a break, we took our break a little early today. Sometimes I lecture a little longer. Sometimes I lecture a little shorter. And today's one of those days. Because you got a one-hour incubation. I have to respect that. So I, I still have to teach all the cell organelles and uh, DNA and protein synthesis. I could do that Friday, uh, but I'm a little behind. So with that, the main thing I want to announce is that lecture exam one would be pushed back to next week Wednesday, not Monday. It's just it'll be too it's too soon. Yes, lecture exam one covers chapters one, two, and three. Chapter three is a cell, and that's what I'm trying to finish up. So let's see, I believe that's Wednesday. Is that the sixth? Yeah. So that's the main thing I want to uh, say. So um, just looking ahead, let's see. This is the sixth. So Monday's the fourth. So on Monday the fourth, I don't know if I'm going to be done or not with DNA. If I'm not done, I'll finish it up. I'm not sure. I might be done. But I definitely want to start the next unit so I don't fall behind, which is uh, epithelial tissue. So that will not be on lecture exam one. This is the next unit. So DNA is, is a lot to cover for, uh, for, for Friday. So I, I want to um, postpone the DNA lab to Monday. Okay, so Monday will also be the DNA lab. Because to have a lab, 
I have to finish lecturing on it, but I may not be done Friday. It would be too soon to have the lab before I finish lecturing. So, um, DNA lab on Monday. It's originally scheduled to be this Friday. That's a cool lab if we get to isolate DNA from strawberries. It's a pretty easy isolation to do. And um, you'll get to do that on Monday. Any questions on the schedule? I have a question. So the, the lecture general one, is that going to be here on Wednesday, or is that the thing we do on the computer? Oh, yes, good question. Lecture exam one is in class. I've been talking about exams on proctorial. Lecture exam is not one of those exams. Okay. So come here. What time does class start? Boom. That's what time the test is in class. Um, that's the first thing you do on test day. Um, I always give the exam first, and if there's um, there are, there will be time I can like lecture after. Okay, but I, I like to get the test out of the way for you guys so you can breathe a little. Have you ever like had class and the test was right after? Could you, could you pay attention? <laughs> you have a test coming. I, I know you can, so I, I give the test first. Any other questions? Okay. Let's take a break, come back in 15 minutes, about 8.35, and we'll start the last.